All right, so the last video I did, I was actually quite surprised at the performance of the 70, RX 7600. I compared this to an RX 6750 XT, and again, the 6750 XT does perform quite a bit better uh, than this does. However, for 1080p gaming, this performed very well. So the system I used it on, or I tested it on to begin with, was the my system with the 7900X, which is... If you're going to be pairing a GPU with the 7900X, chances are you're not only going to spend 300 bucks uh, or even less on a GPU. You're going to go for something that's slightly more powerful. So I was curious to see if this would perform well using an older CPU, such as the 3600X, which is what I tested this in and I'm comparing uh, here in the video. I'm on 1440p. Let's take a back to 1080p. Um, yeah, so as you can see here, it, there is a bit of a bottleneck with the 3600X. So comparing to the performance of the 7900X, there are instances where the performance is pretty much neck and neck. There's not much of a bottleneck, but there are situations where there is a substantial bottleneck. Um, so the first set of columns that you see right here, this is using the 3600X and the second set is the 7900X. And for the there are some instances down here, like for these first few, those were all using internal gaming benchmarks. Uh, so they're pretty easy to run. Then when we get down to like Halo Infinite, Halo Infinite, Starfield and Jedi Fallen Order. Those were in game testing where I actually had to play the game and the performance varies depending on your map and everything else. So within that, there are some discrepancies. For example, here, Jedi Fallen Order, we have a one FPS difference where the 3600X performs better than the 7900X, but that's just uh, within the margin of error, uh, being only one FPS off. But on the side note, the 1% lows are quite a bit higher. So in general, for newer games, you're not going to see much of a bottleneck everything in here except for the one there is a the argument to be made that the one percent lows uh, are going to be higher so you will have a benefit there there will be less uh struggle for the cpu to keep up if you go with a higher end cpu but a 7900x uh is substantially higher than the 3600x if you're used a like a 5600x uh i imagine this would probably virtually disappear but then when you look at some of the older games, such as Far Cry 5 and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, there is a pretty big uh, bottleneck. Um, what was I seeing here? Uh, so an example, Starfield, even though it doesn't have uh, much of a bottleneck, it was using like 80% of the CPU. Uh, on a side note, for an 8 gig, GPU, Forza Horizon 5 pretty much uses 8 gigs, so you're just at that verge of um, being bottlenecked by the VRAM. And then Far Cry 5 doesn't seem to be as good um, from a multi core CPU perspective as the rest of the games because I was only getting like maybe 40% uh, utilization, if even that, out of the 3600X. So the reason why we're seeing a big bottleneck here is that I don't think that game is very well optimized for multi like probably more than a quad core cpu uh, when you start getting into like the six cores it's not able to utilize those as much um it's relying more on single thread performance and then shadow of the tomb raider the gpu utilization their cpu utilization was up there but it was uh in certain scenes during the benchmark bottlenecking the gpu uh, because the CPU, it just wasn't, it's just not powerful enough. So we are seeing in general at 1080p, a bottleneck on the 7600 side, if you are playing older games. However, if you do plan on buying newer titles and playing them at 1080p, the 7600 is a perfectly good uh, GPU to pair with a 3600X or something equivalent to that, because you're still going to be able to get pretty much full utilization out of it in games like Cyberpunk 2077, where it's only off by a few FPS, Halo Infant, Starfield, and Jedi Fallen Order. And as you can see here, aside from Starfield, we're getting 60 FPS or more, which is 
perfectly acceptable to play those games at 1080p. Now, moving on to 1440p, this is where that bottleneck pretty much disappears. It's not the best 1440p card for playing newer games, but for playing older games, it definitely is a really good GPU for older games. As you can see, for the most part, like Ghost Recon, Far Cry 5, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we're getting like near 100 FPS or higher, uh, which is almost the same FPS that we were seeing on my 7900X. So in general, uh, at 1440p for playing older games, if you have a 1440p monitor, you can play 1440p games, uh, the older ones, at a really good FPS. And then even some of the newer ones, like look at Halo Infinite, we're getting 90 FPS and it's essentially the same. Again, the we're showing that the 3600X is doing better than the 7900X, but that again, Halo Infinite was, this wasn't campaign, this was uh, the in-game Slayer mode. So depending on the map or what's going on, those FPS are going to differ uh, considerably game to game. Uh, I wouldn't say the 3600X is better, it's just the game that I was playing, it had a higher 1% low. Did I fall in order? That's another one. It's saying 7%, but we're, we're talking 2 FPS. That's within the margin of error. So we're still getting um, comparatively similar uh, benchmarks. The 1% lows on some of the older games like Far Cry 5 and Ghost Recon uh, Breakpoint. Uh, we're getting quite a bit higher FPS, 1% uh, lows. Uh, oddly enough, Cyberpunk 2077, which is very... They've made a change to the... Um, with the update, and it's much more um, CPU relied, so it is able to utilize um, multi-core CPUs better. And we're seeing that the extra cores and the you know higher clock speed is helping out on that one percent low. But again, we're it's fifteen percent, but it's only like seven FPS, which isn't a huge difference. We're still getting pretty high uh, one percent lows there. So overall, in general. This game, yeah, the third, sorry, this game, this GPU uh, will pair nicely with a 3600X. I'm not surprised that it's being bottleneck at 1080p uh, with older titles just because they're not as graphically intensive, which means it will be more CPU intensive because the GPU is going to be able to pump out a lot of frames that the CPU will have to keep up with, and it's just struggling to do that. You're still getting fantastic frame rates. They're in the Going back to 1080p, we're looking at 100 plus. Like all the get FPS here are really high, except for Starfield at 1080p. So I know a lot of people have kind of been, you know, crapping on the 7600. Uh, I think it's a perfectly good GPU. Yeah, I have a problem with the price, but any new game, newer GPU, the price is ridiculous. This is the cheapest current gen GPU that you can get. Uh, it's great for 1080p and some 1440p gaming. Uh, you're going to get really high frame rates and you're not going to be spending a ton of money on it because when you start moving up into like the 4060s, uh, 7700 XT, 7800 XT, any of those, you're pretty much jumping up 150, 200 plus dollars. That's Canadian, so it's probably more like $150. Uh, but you're jumping up well over 50%, like the cost of this. So if you're where I bought this for 320, I think a 4060 Ti is at a little over $500 Canadian. So that's substantially more money. Um, and if you are using an older CPU, those GPUs are going to be even more, there's going to be an even greater bottleneck. If you're playing it at 1080p or even 1440p, that you're not going to be able to realize the benefits in most cases. Uh, case in point, if you're playing, uh, if you have a 4060 Ti and you're playing some of these older games for like Far Cry or Ghost Recon Breakpoint, things like that, you're not going to get any better performance because you are going to be handicapped by the CPU. So I hope this helps uh, if you're trying to decide on whether you want to upgrade your GPU and you're using a older system, you are perfectly, uh, the bottleneck's perfectly in reason, especially considering if you're going to be playing newer titles, uh, 
there's not going to be as much of a bottleneck there because those newer titles are getting more and more GPU dependent uh, as they come out. So less of the stress is on the CPU and more is being put on the GPU, which as you can see here, um, kind of hurts the performance um, because it is more GPU de dependent and you can get away with having a lower end CPU. So 3600 is still a great CPU. Uh, the only problem I have with this, and it's not just this, it's any card with an eight gigabytes of VRAM, is that the newer games are getting more and more graphically demanding and requiring more and more VRAM. Like I was saying, Forza Horizon 5 was pretty much hitting the eight gigabyte mark. I even had a warning pop up saying that there wasn't enough VRAM, but that really didn't impact the performance too much. It was still hitting that almost 100% utilization. But it's getting there. Uh, we're getting to the point where even 1080p games uh, needs more than eight gigabytes of RAM. And if you do plan on uh, turning on ray tracing, that requires even more VRAM. So just keep that in mind that if you plan on keeping the card for the long run, you might want to pony up a little bit more money and get something with 10 to 12 gigabytes of VRAM at 1080p um, at the minimum or even more if you plan on going and playing at 1440p. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. Uh, the cut the cost of these cards, they do uh, kind of cripple it with lower VRAM. Um, I personally like the 6750 XT because that has 12 gigabytes of VRAM. It gives you a lot more bandwidth. It was only about $100 more than this card. Um, and it is an improvement, substantial improvement. Um, uh, FPS wise uh, over the card. Uh, but again, even the 6750 XT is going to be bottlenecked uh, at 1080p using 3600X. However, uh, the newer games that come out, um, you'll, you'll be able to keep that card longer and enjoy newer games as they come out because it's not going to, A, it's going to have bandwidth to utilize or play those more demanding games and it's going to have enough VRAM. Uh, for games that require more VRAM. Anyway, if you found this video helpful uh, or informative, please like the channel or subscribe to the channel, like the video, and leave a comment down below. Have a good one.